You uh, gave yourself that name, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, because of the, um, the little rap that I did at the beginning of my uh, presentation last week, my, my debut international rap. <laughs> That's right. So uh, if you follow hip hop, you know what, what one common way to create a name for yourself, a persona, is you know JC Jace, Jackie Jack. So it's Shawnee Sean. Shawnee Sean has got it going on. That okay. that's it. And we're gonna I'm gonna bring up your slide here in just a moment. Here we go. And I think I gave you controls. No, I did not. So here yeah. you go. Jace, can you play the video first? I absolutely will. Uh, another thing, I've got, I've got uh, the time remaining says 32 minutes, is that right? Don't worry. No, it works. It's going to be longer than that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I need a bit longer than that. It's going to be a 90-minute session. Uh, okay, so, so listen, listen carefully, everybody, to the video. The video is important. Jack's doing, I, well, I inter I'm not Jack, sorry. Sean, uh, all this received pronunciation stuff, I'm getting confused who I'm talking to. Um, no. Um, it, Sean, as I mentioned, is doing something really cool, really creative. You're going to love it. Uh, it involves him needing you to really pay attention. He's actually going to come back at the end and do something else with us. So let me get the video on. And this should be it. Hello, everyone. This is Sean Banville from BreakingNewsEnglish.com. Hello everyone. Hello everyone, this is Sean Banville from BreakingNewsEnglish.com and I'm happy to be back in the WIS IQ classroom for ELTT. Uh, my classroom is actually the spare room in my house, which is on top of a mountain in Japan. In my WIS IQ class a few days ago, I talked about listening to the news and about how news is a totally fantastic thing to take into the classroom. I talked about how useful it is at all levels, including lower levels, uh, to motivate students, and how it provides a compulsive, almost addictive purpose for listening or reading. I introduced some of the 40 to 50 activities I make for every lesson on my Breaking News English site. Uh, these all help students with listening to news. In my 10-minute class today, titled Making the News, I need your help. I need the ELTT presenters to help me, and I need the teachers in chat to help me too. We're going to collaborate and write a news story. Then I'm going to disappear for an hour or so and make a lesson with as many activities as I can. Um, I hope to make a five-speed listening, multi-speed reading, dictation, online activities, uh, and a PDF uh, with lots of exercises on it. I'm aiming for 50, uh, but I've never done this before. I've never made so much stuff in so short a time frame, so I'm not sure <laughs> how it's going to go. Uh, I'll upload any everything I do and then come back for the final two minutes of my class uh, to show you what I did. You can use it next week in your class, or next year, if you're lucky enough to be on holiday already. So, let's begin, and let's make some news. Let's make some news, indeed, with Shawnee Sean. Shawnee Sean, who's got it going on, is uh, breaking new ground here. We're going to use the online... Uh, experience to do a live collaborative exercise. Sean, do you want to uh, mention a little more about what we're doing? Yep. Um, okay. Let's make some news, everybody. I, I hope you're ready to start typing. This will be tomorrow's um, headline in the newspapers. ELTT, teachers make the news and everybody's going to do it. Okay, I was hoping for some more presenters because I wanted them to see. But the presenters that are here, if you have time, stop listening to me for the rest of this little five-minute slot. Uh, I want you to make a simple online activity and send me the link uh, um, to my address. I'll post it soon. Um, it can be an audio boom file, a wall wisher, a voice thread, or something in... Um, 
on, on Facebook, anything that you can just give me a link. Okay. Um, the activity or the title of the activity, the lesson that I'm going to make is learning English using technolo technology. Is it good or bad? Okay. I'll type the, uh, my email address in now. If you can <laughs> make something in the next five minutes. So that's uh, where you should send it to. <laughs> or the lesson, the online lesson that I'm going to upload, hopefully in an hour. Uh, your name will be on it and I can link your site or whatever. Okay, so to the teachers in chat, I really want you to help me. I need your help. We're going to make a lesson together. There's going to be hopefully about 50 activities and they're all going to be online in one hour, I hope. I've never done this before. Um, this is the first paragraph of a news article. And I want you, the teachers in chat, to help me finish this paragraph. I need your ideas on uh, about problems with using technology to study English. So I will copy and paste them into the article, and then I will go away and make the lesson. So please, give me your ideas. You have three minutes. Your ideas about problems with using technology to study English. Not everybody has access to a computer. Excellent. Not all students have the internet. No internet connection. Very good. Sometimes students forget their passwords, yes. No internet access. Excellent. Differences, yes. Adult students often do not have tech skills. Excellent, Melissa. That's great. Uh, students prefer face-to-face -face power cuts here. <laughs> That, that would be a big problem. People prefer smartphones to the computer. Okay, still technology. Okay, right. I think that's it for the problems with technology. Now, two or three minutes. Uh, I want you to finish this paragraph. I'll, I'll, t I'll type it um, after I leave you. I want your ideas about why using technology to study English why is technology good in the classroom? So you can stop talking about the problems now. Why is it great? It's quick visualization, more engaging. Yes, yes, yes. Connect one to one. Fantastic. Differentiate learning. It allows us to do work collaboratively. Huge resources available. Okay. All very, very good ideas. I hope I put them all in the, uh, the lesson. Okay. Jace, doing? I'll be back in an hour, I hope, with a lesson for you. I love it. It's okay. amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Sean, whatever happens with this, the idea is sensational. Hopefully we'll get it right, but I'm 100% convinced of, of the effectiveness of doing this in the future. So let's give it our best shot here. Uh, but, if you know, we're experimenting. But what do you think about the idea? Okay. Um, let's, let's, I, let's Sean a little up. The, the idea is, is incredible. There's so many ways you could do something with this. Sean, you're going to need to put a name on this uh, this approach here because uh, <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> so give it a name panic, later. It's called the panic um, approach. It's called what? The panic approach. <laughs> panic approach. <laughs> uh, it is really cool. Uh, and it's just it's really amazing. We're talking about things that are, are positive about technology. Here is a way that you can do something that's actually very intimate with students and, and personalized that you can't really do unless you're online. At least you can't do it in a very diverse, you know, getting enough diversity here uh, to. So really, really cool. So, Sean, you're going to go away. I know you're going to work on this and uh, I'll bring you back in later. Okay. I'll have something. And if I don't finish it, I'll, I'll tell you at the end. I'll. Um, it, well, it, uh, the lesson will be ready in two hours from now. The whole <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be here for two hours. We'll definitely be here for about an hour. What you could do yeah. is a, tr a truncated version or you know, perhaps the introduction or something to share. Uh, or, okay. or who knows? But we'll be here for another hour for sure. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, All right. see you later. Bye. Isn't that great? We love Sean. Go, Shawnee. Go, <laughs> Shawnee. Shawnee Sean, in the place to be. <laughs> uh, Shawnee, what do we say? Shawnee Sean uh, has got it going on. All right, we're going to take away his camera and his microphone. Yes, and that means it is time to bring in another wonderful friend and colleague, like North Cackalack time. Uh, Vicki Holland is someone I've known uh, longer than I've known Jack. Uh, um, but not that long, but when you think about how close we became online and how recently I've been at their house, as you, most of you, uh, or many of you know, to collaborate and work on video together uh, with her husband, uh, Jay. It's just been um, an amazing experience on so many different levels for me. So I'm very, very happy that she's with us today uh, on our last day in this MOOC. And uh, she'll always be with here, It'll always be with us for future MOOCs, uh, I'm sure. Or I'll have to go get her, snatch her back, and throw her back in. Uh, she is a friend, colleague, and mentor you now. So I'm really happy to be working with her. Uh, uh, how many of you know about Vicky and Jay's videos? Simple English videos. Can I get a thumbs up or a yes if you've seen uh, their videos? SimpleEnglishVideos.com is their website. And then uh, Vicky Hollett Video, but you can find that easily in YouTube, just Simple English Videos. They have uh, incredible materials they've made. And I know this now firsthand because I'm working with them on some things, and um, it's it's it, they're just amazing. So please, please check them out. I'm sure Vicky will mention um, simple English videos again here. Uh, I'm going to illuminate her, bring her in, so you can see her, and she can work with us. Everybody, here is Vicky Hollett. <laughs> Vicky, can you speak yeah. so we see if we hear you? Can everybody hear me? Am I coming through? Can you give me a thumbs up if I am? Yay! I'm all, I'm online and it's all working. This is good. Excellent. I have got a hat too, but my hat doesn't fit over my over my um <laughs> headphones. <laughs> you you need to get a special online headphone hat, I guess. They, that's that's something actually. Dr. Jigsaw, because I don't know if all of you know, it's a good time to remind you. Uh, our good friend, Dr. Nelly Deutsch, uh, has some different inventions, some contraptions that are very useful for the online teacher and student, including a, a way to use the bathroom without having to leave your seat. Uh, if you're interested, you can, uh, I think she's got some sort of catalog. But yeah, we need to get hats, hats that work with different headsets. Uh, Vicki Hollett, I'm going to go away. If you need me, please call me back in. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'm going to start with... Um, one of the simple English videos that we've made. Um, you here for a very, very short thing. And, oh, yes. So first question for you, when do we use the verbs raise and rise? Um, of course, it's always a problem for our students. What problems do they have? Oh, can you hear me? Am I speaking loudly enough, everyone? Perhaps you can adjust the volume. Um, so any question oh good excellent any questions that the students have about these verbs and what do they get wrong they get them muddled up of course now one of them is regular and one of them is irregular so that's got to be sorted out but mostly the problems they have are about meanings so i want to show you a very quick little video that we made to try and sort it out jace i don't know if we can i'll try praying it now oh it looks like no that's not it no, I've got to go back, Jace. Can you put the video on for me? I learned. Here we go. So, raise and rise. Well, it looks, Hello, it looks like more this than one Sean person Dan is trying Dan to Dan control Dan. the uh, 
Uh, if I could just control the media player. I don't know if that's you or maybe that's Sandeep. No, I'm not uh, trying to. You're not. Okay. So uh, hopefully I, I put you in as the second video here, but it seems to be playing Sean Bonville's video again. Let's try it. Okay, let's see. Well, let me just get out of oh, here. No. Oh, no. Now, I think there's multiple uh, media players open here. So let me, let's try something else. Hello, everyone. Oh. This is Sean. I'd like to get Sean down in the video. Do you think he'd help me make one? Because I know he'd be very good. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. I think he'd be amazing in one of your videos. <laughs> this seems like the correct video, but it's taking a long time to get started here. Not sure quite why that is. <laughs> oh, good so point, Kevin. It'll, it'll come. It'll come. If you if you could uh, maybe take a couple questions or or, or talk to the the folks. Yeah, I Helen, will keep working on Helen's this. raised that something students. That you've got raises, transitive, and rises in this transitive. Is Sean this is Sean Banville from <laughs> Breaking News English. I'm not. I'm not doing that. Uh, this is Sean Sun Banville <laughs> from Breaking News English. Com. One moment. And I'm happy to be back in the Wiz IQ class. Sandeep, let's see. Sandeep, are you there? Uh, Sandeep, <laughs> if you could, if you could give us. Uh, oh, good. Could you please a second video? Uh, that is there that would be great for some reason the media player is not behaving for me thank you so much so it's the second one <laughs> that's not the one not that one right so the second one that's in there Hello everyone, yeah. this is Sean right. Banville from BreakingNewsEnglish.com and I'm... I can do that one. Yeah. That's a good idea, Nelly. While we're waiting for that to be sorted out, would anybody know what it's like to have Jason coming to stay? And it's not that one either. No, that's not it. Oh, I know. Good for you. Not sure what is going on here. I definitely have it here. So where is it? All right. Uh, let me let me add it back in then. This is the unit for you. Because I played oh, it. I played it. Well, I played it before the class, and it was there. So I don't know why there's now two of the same one. So let me. Uh, this is the unit for you. The unit for you, my friend. That we can't find the right videos. Okay, so if you could stop <laughs> playing them. <laughs> This is the unit for you, ah, my nope. friend. I guess we're both we're both playing them now. All right, so let me go. Ah, there. Oh no, that's not it. All right, I'll be right back in. Just give me one second, and I'll get the link. Nope, not that one, Sunday. Please turn them off. It's not there. Close the media player. This is the unit All for right. you, my friend. This is the unit nope. for you, my friend. Close the media player. All right, and I will go hunt for it. I'll be right back in. Give me one sec. Okay, so let me tell you what it's like to have Jace to stay while I'm away finding my video. It's absolutely exhausting. It's a lot of fun. But what you find is he's full of energy. So you're working from the moment you get up to the moment you go to sleep. And it's all very exciting. We've made lots and lots of video clips that we can use in different videos. Um, we had him out going around Philadelphia and we were filming lots of scenes there. And um, Jay and I also put him in videos that we're making as well. And he plays all sorts of characters for him, for us. So please watch out for them because they'll be coming along soon. I think he's a very good actor. <laughs> oh, you saw his serious side in my video. Yeah, he has serious sides. He has funny sides, he has threatening sides, he has, um, and sometimes Jay and I play jokes on him in the video as well. Uh, yes, well, the, the, I think actually Jace is just going off and finding the link now, Martin, so hopefully we'll get to it soon. I did say that this video was going to be very quick, didn't I? 
and now it seems to be taking a long time. <laughs> I'm very excited about Christmas, Jack. Um, we've got the grandkids coming over. We're going to have some parties. Um, it's going to be a, a very nice one. But I think probably the best Christmas present I had was today, this morning, when I started going through all the clips we've made in the last few weeks of new videos. And it's a bit like getting lots of little presents and opening them up and seeing the things we've really recorded and looking at what I can, I can build with them. Um, here we go. Are you all getting ready for your... Oh, oh ladies, we're off and gentlemen. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, Vicky will rise into the... <laughs> well, you know, going up and down in the air that often, obviously, was very tiring. Yes. <laughs> Nabila. And now. Chase, I don't know what the problem is for you. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Give them the link. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to answer questions. And if you go to then, you can watch the video. And now, there. ladies and gentlemen, Vic and now, ladies and, and, now, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Vicky will rise, Vicky into, will the rise air. into the air. She's rising. She's rising. She's risen. She's risen. She rose. Oh. She rose. Oh. What happened? I used my magic powers, I used my to, raise magic powers to raise you into the air. What else can you do? What else can you do with that? Oh, anything. I can even make you disappear. Both of these verbs describe upward movement. Raise, raised, raised. Rise, rose, risen. When we raise something, we move it to a higher level. And in technology news, the government is launching a campaign to raise awareness of internet security. Apple won its lawsuit against Samsung in the United States. As a result, Samsung may raise the price of its Galaxy phones and tablets. Companies raise prices. Companies increase them. Prices rise. They go up on their own. Temperatures rise. Pressure rises. Hot air rises, so the balloons rise into the air. The sun rises in the east. Nobody puts it up. It rises on its own. And for his next trick, Jay is going to rise into the air. and it worked for everybody else and you were all able to see it. Fingers crossed it worked okay. Did you? Yes. Oh, good. Good, good, good. And I know some of you have seen it before because Muhammad, 
you knew what was coming at the end with the jokes. <laughs> so it's a very short little lesson. It's only two minutes. And the words transitive and intransitive in it. Did I say those words? I didn't anywhere, did I? Do you think I should have done? Safa mentioned it, yes. <laughs> Um, there's no need, I think. You can if you want. Um, and if your students know the words, that's the important thing. But a lot of students, you find yourself having to teach grammar words and the concept at the same time. So if there's no need to do that, then I try not to. And with that, I knew some students would know transitive, some intransitive, some wouldn't. And so because there were some that wouldn't, I tried to avoid it. Um, so, how do we do it? Well, what I do after I've done that sort of video is I show them pictures from the video and I see if they can remember the words, the missing words. So, and now, ladies and gentlemen, Vicky will, what's the missing word? Rise into the air, exactly. And then I said she's rising, she's risen, she rose. So they get all three forms of it. And it's an irregular verb. And I want them to know it's an irregular verb, of course. Um, and I see if I can remember the other one as well. And in technology move, news, the government is launching a campaign to raise awareness of internet security. So first of all, I ask them to recall the missing words. And then I ask them to name some things that often rise. And they saw some in the video. What was sun? Exactly, Slavka. There were some more as well. Prices. We had prices, didn't we? Temperatures. Risk. That's a good one, Teresa. So they can think of ones that were in the video, but also other ones as well. Um, pay rise. Oh, yes, we all want to pay rise. <laughs> it never rises enough. Um, and so here we go. And I give them some pictures to help them. You know, and it's to help them. Boiling milk rises in the pan. That's another good one. Fairs rise. Good one. Dough, exactly. Dough will rise and cakes can rise. And the price of petrol rises. Pressure. Smoke, of course. Smoke can rise. Um, now, with, with rays, of course, it's different because with rays, someone will, will do the action. So there, I ask them a different set of questions. I ask them, when might somebody, someone, raise their glass? So when might somebody raise their glass? For a toast, exactly. To celebrate something, we might raise our glass for a toast. And I can ask, when might someone raise their voice? When they're angry, exactly. When they're shouting about something. And they're, perhaps they're excited as well. When they want to be listened to, exactly, Martin. To yell at Carter, yes. When Carter's misbehaving, Carter is our dog. And we have to yell at him when he's misbehaving. We raise our voices. Uh, when might somebody raise an alarm? When, when there's a fire. Exactly. Um, when might somebody raise funds? In case of a tornado, Melissa, yeah, good example. In, when would you raise, need to raise funds? To get support. Lovely, yes. That's good, Anna. Anything else? When the videos don't work, then we need to raise an alarm. Nice one, Shorty. <laughs> um, so the students can go through and they can come up with their own examples. And somebody says personalise them. Exactly. And one they sometimes don't know is when might somebody raise an eyebrow? When something is perhaps a little bit wrong. When they're surprised, yes. 
Exactly. When they're surprised, they might raise two eyebrows. And when they just raise one, they might be um, showing that they disapprove of something as well. Um, so, there it is. Congratulations. You have completed some activities of the Raise and Rise. And I like to get the students to personalise the acti activity as well, as I mentioned. So perhaps they can finish about with some telling one another about some of the things that raise your spirits when you're feeling down. Anything you've got, do you want to share music? Yes. Anything that raises your spirits when you're down? Mediation, meditation, chocolate. Oh, good one raises our spirits. A walk in, in the countryside, that would raise it to room two. Excellent. Okay, so there it is. A little quick video that my students like that I have fun with. If you want to see it again, I've got a YouTube channel. Um, please go to the YouTube channel because it's got lots of other little videos like this if you'd like to see some more. And you'll find me on YouTube at Vicky Hollett Video. And we've also got it at our website, Simple English Videos, where you'll find it with a clickable transcript that enables you to move around and control the video completely. So, thank you very much, everyone. Jace, hello there. Are you still there? I'm right here, <laughs> hanging on every word you're saying and every word that's written here. It's uh, really great how your videos work in an online classroom. Having said that, it's not really good how my command of the media player to play those videos works. So, that one is actually my fault, not with IQ. Um, it has to do with my internet connection, actually, I've discovered. So you really need a, a pretty fast one to control the media player. And um, mine's not as fast as I, I guess I thought it was. But uh, anyway, next time I'll just let, let uh, Sandeep do it. <laughs> yes, I'm back in New Jersey. You can tell because I am i don't have the books behind me. I'm, I'm on the, the cheaper webcam. Uh, Vicky, Vicky's uh, stay in Philadelphia. I'd, I'd love to stay in Philadelphia, actually. But it sounds—it sounds like I was—it sounds like I was wearing out my host. No, <laughs> we loved having you. Come back soon. I'll come back as soon as possible. That's absolutely sh for sure. Thank you so much, Vicky. What did you—what did you think of that? You think you could use simple English videos as teachers with your students? Oh, Martin's asked a question. He said, how much time does it... Um, probably it's actually quite a long time, Martin. Um, I would say... What, what happens is I like to record the little bits in different parts. Um, and then something like... Then we just record a whole batch of things together. And so something like the green screen, it takes probably three hours to put it up. So we like to record lots of green screen material while we're doing it. So it's quite hard to estimate a time. But I should think probably that video, all in all, took about 24 hours to produce. Yeah. Just two minutes. Sad, isn't it? But it's a lot of fun. And I do recommend it to everyone that you go and try it and start doing it. And also get your students to try it and start doing it, because they can produce magical things too. Yes, and uh, I, and most of us uh, involved in FD techniques. She has uh, her background. Her profession is is a big part of that is video production. Uh, so when she says twenty four hours, it's because she's putting all this great care into it and using software that's very advanced uh, and planning every step of the way. But as she just said, it's really easy now for students and teachers to make their own videos with you know, less less complicated and less expensive equipment and so forth. Um, and I think, you know, the simple English videos, it's not just the English that's simple, it's also just the concepts, the, the way it's done. You could do your own that way. Um, Melissa's done one. I know some other people have done them, uh, you know, in, in, in that particular style. So uh, I, I think very inspiring what they do for both people who have experience making videos and people who don't have experience uh, can do the kind of thing they're doing. 
there's someone here, Jace. Melissa is here. Oh, and she's she, here. I just, she, she, I didn't know she was here. <laughs> I saw some of the videos. And she went away. And in one morning, she put together a fantastic video on borrow and land. Melissa, if you're there, perhaps you could put the, the link in the chat for people. But it's brilliant. And if not, I'll go away and find it myself and pop it in in a minute. But that was it was terrific. So Melissa is another great, great person's video to watch. OK. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Vicky. And uh, don't go anywhere because I might bring you in at the end okay. to, say, to say hello <laughs> like, or to say goodbye or happy holidays, something like that. Yes, MAP in the place to be. She's here. Look at all these folks coming in still. We've got 53 people here. Vicky, Tata, see you in a minute. See you in a minute. All right. We're going to take away her controls here. Doesn't look like. Ah, there we go. Okay. Can everybody see and hear me? Because I'm your next presenter. So let's make sure that uh, I'm, I'm coming in clear enough for you. Yes. Good. Thank you, Dr. Nelly, for the link. You can hear me okay. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. Rapping and rapping. We were doing a lot of play on words with that one. Uh, uh, I mean, doing a lot of play on words at Vicky's. You can imagine uh, three, three lingua. Well, Jay's not a linguist, but... He's very into language too. So you imagine three people making videos and playing around with words like rapping and rapping uh, for the holidays and so forth. I just uh, made a lot of different videos with Vicky as a kind of, a, uh, well, as an actor or a stand-in uh, for some of these things that, that uh, Vicky's amazing idea. She has so, so uh, it's just an honor to be able to be in those videos and learn from them about how to make videos and uh, how to be an actor, um, which I'd never done before. So it's really, really great. Uh, I, in particular, I made a very special video after this class. I'm going to release it. A uh, few of you here have, have previewed it. Uh, I've shown them uh, showed, showed them earlier. But uh, maybe a Christmas wrap. Yeah, I might get into that. We'll see. We'll see. But first of all, I want to show you a video um, that I think, I hope, you'll agree could be useful. Uh, with your students. Your students could watch it on their own, like a self, self study. Uh, so my videos, if you know, uh, most of them are based on songs that I write that focus on grammar structures and vocabulary, particularly grammar and vocabulary that are either boring traditionally to learn or difficult or both. And especially the idea of, you know, the list, the reference list of verbs plus prepositions, for example. How do we get that in people's heads? Uh, or a grammar structure, uh, like the present perfect. If you don't get enough repeated practice with something like that, it's not going to be up here when you need to use it uh, fluently and accurately in real life. So songs can really help with that. I'm just saying that by way of introduction, if you don't know about what I do, I'm going to play the video that I chose today. Then I'll present a short activity you can do uh, with a group, and this could be a group, I wrote it um, for an on the ground physical classroom, so traditional classroom, uh, but I went back to it and tweaked it a little bit, uh, and it works both for physical classroom and uh, online classroom, I think you'll agree, I hope. Um, and um, I have many variations on this activity, so when we talk about it, I may add some different things, and I would like any ideas you have as well. So. Um, Actually, I'll, I'll be any trouble, then I'll go back and ask Sandeep to help me. But it should be here, I hope. It's this one. Hello, everyone. <laughs> this is Sean Banville from I give up. Using it. I give up. Um, Sandeep, Sandeep, before before I do anything, I, I'm just I'm not going to do it at all. So I hope uh, you. Yeah, Sean just won't go away. At least, at least when I I do it. So I'm telling you guys, I am not pressing the button. I know maybe you don't believe me, and maybe it's my internet connection. 
Uh, but Sandeep, I'm not going to touch it. I need you. Good, you're here. There's support at WizIQ. That's our good friend Sandeep. Uh, the name of the video, it's the one that starts out with Rhyme on Time, Collar Tunes. When I put it in, it was number three. It was number three. I had them in order. Uh, but every one that I click is uh, turns out to be Sean's. <laughs> so looks like you're fooling around with it, doing something here. It is there. In fact, before I... So if you want to uh, try to do it, and then I'll let you know if it's the right one. So if you can bear with me, uh, while we're waiting here... Yeah, the ghost is back in the house. I, I don't know what it is with the media player. The media player doesn't like me. It just doesn't like me. I thought it was everybody, but it's just me. <laughs> yeah, you saw my video came on earlier. It is there. That's right, Claudia. It is there. Um, I do want to show it to you before I show you the PowerPoint. Uh, so uh, while we're waiting, while we're waiting here, uh, let me just remind you of a few things, which, uh, number one, you do have uh, an extra week to do your post-class tasks. We do have another MOOC coming up. Does anyone know what the theme um, of YouTube later? After you have to go now? Sure. I, I will put the link up there um, for sure. Does anyone know speaking? Yes, yeah, speaking is the next, the next topic for March. And why do you think I chose speaking if we're just talking about listening and pronunciation? What, what aspects of speaking, especially thinking about what your students complain about most and need the most help with, what, what, kinds of, what kinds of topics, issues could we focus on in a speaking MOOC? Ah, and as, as happens, with me, regardless of the browser I'm in, I can't see the chat. <laughs> well, uh, oh, here we go. Here, it's coming back in now. Attending feed. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's not that video. I never put that video in. I don't know what video that is. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Didn't put that one in. Oh boy. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get the video again. Even though I did load it, it is there. So let me go and get that. Yeah, we're Drew. Now we got the ghost of Drew. Uh, give me one second, guys. I'm gonna duck out of here and go get the video. I'm so sorry. One sec.
Okay, I'm having a problem on my end, so hopefully Sandeep will play it now. Sandeep, if you can hear me, could you please do it? Because the media player is just not working for me. I'll give you the link right now. Ah, there it is. It's coming right now. Yep, Sandeep, it's working for him. Okay, if you could play that for us, that would be great. And I'll put the link in a few times. Okay, is it playing for you? Because it's not playing for me. <laughs> Sandeep, if you could play the video. If you had more money, would you have a better life? More money, would you have a better life? Do you wish you were married and had more money would you have a better life do you wish you were married and had a husband or a wife if you went around the world who would you meet if you felt would you land on your own two feet would you ever cheat on a final exam if your friend needed help would you give her a hand or do you wish you were taller Cuter or thinner If you met the president Would you ask him to dinner Would you be the winner If we played a game If you moved somewhere different Would you still act the same Could you live in a shack All by yourself Would you own a gun And keep it on your shelf If you had poor health Would you write your will would you choose to live forever if it came in a pill? You say a one for the trouble, two for the time. Oh, come on, y'all, let's rock the... Okay, <clears throat> so you saw the video, good. ColinWinSpark.com, that is my website. Yes, thank you. Uh, what is the video about? We're gonna watch it one more time after we look at the activity. I'm glad you liked it. Somebody mentioned it is a grammar focus, yes. Conditional, someone says conditional two. Conditional two plus wish. Are they all wishes? What could we say about uh, all of the questions? They're conditionals. What does conditional to mean? Uh, unreal present. Imaginary situations. Hypothetical. Unreal past. Now that's an interesting word, past, because certainly it makes sense in, in a way, past. Why, why, why past? Past and present at the same time? 
There is something about past, but I believe we want to call it the present, with the unreal the present. Let's take a look at my activity then, because I get into these questions. So I've, I've used this song in many different ways. And before we get into anything here, if you found or find, if you haven't used my stuff, your students just like to listen and watch and not do anything so structured or concrete uh, with, with this song or other songs, and you, you've got enough of that already in your curriculum, then you could use the song just as a song for examples uh, with the conditionals. What I did here was to include focus on, you know, present unreal uh, works, not how it's structured. I didn't get into that, but how uh, into into a little bit with the form and especially with the use. Uh, you still hear the video. Hmm. Okay. Well, it's off of my screen. Uh, it may be there may be a delay on on yours. Uh, the name of the song is Unreal Now. Why did I call it Unreal Now? Remove from present in reality. Yeah, so what I often talk about with students is the past form. Is it the past tense or is it distance from what? It's not past tense for sure. It's the past form, very confusing, very inconvenient, but distance from reality. That's right. So uh, this is a really important thing. Uh, I do a lot of checking, you know, is it, is it the present? Yeah, actually, some, <laughs> with, with students who really need, I mean, if you can translate, yeah, I stick, I stay away from using that word. It just depends on your approach. But what happens a lot um, is you, you find students, even when you have the present unreal in their language, it's really hard to get fluent and accurate with it. So French for me, it's pretty, it's very similar. Petition in practice to, to get get it automatic. So anyway, here's here's an activity I have. I'll just uh, ex uh, tell you about it. And uh, before listening, dictate selected questions from the song. Does anyone remember one of the questions from the song? Sorry, that's my phone. I usually unplug it. Does anyone see see how much teachers like to talk about grammar? Right? You just say it's a subjunctive mood, blah, blah, blah. But what about trying to get our students to really use this stuff? <laughs> ah, if I were a president, would you write a will? Ah, if you met some before you start, again, this is one of countless activities you could do uh, with this or any content, right? So we'll just focus on, on this one today. And I'm sure you could come up with similar or, or maybe better ones than this. So you could dictate some of those questions beforehand. Students compare in pairs right on the board. They could go up and write them. Uh, you correct as a group. Highlight the stress and intonation. Now, I, when I did this activity, I'm thinking this is not the first time the students have done present unreal. Um, and the vocabulary level is more or less their level. Right? But highlight the stress and intonation especially, right? So if you've got uh, the one from the song, um, if you met the president, would you ask him for dinner? Where is the stress? Right. So if you met the president, if you met the president, right, ask to dinner. So we've got it on where? Met president, right? Not president or president, right? Met the president. Ask. Dinner, right? So that's that shrinking and Lincoln, right, in between, right? If you met, if you, if you met the president, would you, right? Would you? And as we talked about in so many of these uh, MOOC classes uh, that we've had, it's wonderful to see how many people are focusing on word stress and sentence stress and shrinking and linking. That even when we speak slowly, if it's authentic English, we don't say if. You met the president, would you ask him to go? So, and formal, the intonation would be different, right? So, if you met the president, would you ask him to dinner? 
I said that very slowly. I said it with higher intonation, more formal tone, but still the shrinking and linking. All right? So important. So we really need, as a service to our students, get into uh, this. And by the way, I came up with shrinking and linking. I love that everyone's using it. I just want to go on record saying that. So <laughs> I love that everybody's using it. Though. It's one of the few things I've ever said that everyone's actually using. So shrinking and linking. Uh, good. So uh, correct as a group. They go up on the board, put them up there. This is I like doing this before they even know there's a song, right? So just some dictation of a few sentences. Then what? Well, for this activity, what I did was to kind of review with them. This is the idea is here. This is not the first time they've, they've uh, done anything with the present unreal. What's the difference? If I'm if I'm the president, I'll give you a job. If I were the president, I would give you a job. And so the students are discussing meanings, maybe in pairs, groups. Can I say if I'm a woman in English? How about in your language? Well, if you're a an Asian language speaker, like Japanese or Korean, you can say that, right? There is no unreal conditional. You know from other chews, right? <clears throat> With the words, the situation. So if you have the same structure, great. Uh, but in, in some languages, doesn't exist. And then it's even harder usually to get accurate and fluent and right, and then there's the, if I would be, right? Like German is a good example of that. So even if you have the unreal, it can be different structures, word orders, etc. cetera. Um, really important thing going over and over again, I do with, with this grammar structure is, you know, what, what, what time frame is this? What tense? You know, where are we? Present, present. It's present. How do you know it's present? Well, I think it's really good, these related questions. Are you a woman? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Are you the president? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. If you're not, right, if I were the president, but all the other questions, everything in the discourse, it's present time frame, right? Let's take another example. You know, I don't have enough money. You know, ah, my job, I'm not getting paid enough. Present. You know, if I had more money, I would, right? This is present. We're thinking now. We're imagining now. And it's hard because... The simple past form is used in present time, right? It's really important to make sure we they're not thinking this is past, right? Moving on to while listening. Now, while listening, the first time should not be identifying questions, in my opinion. It should be just listening, enjoy. But maybe you might hear some of the questions that we did in the dictation, right? Uh, and then maybe a second listen. Can you identify them? So if they, if you did a dictation with the, if you asked the president, if you met the president, would you ask him to dinner? Maybe, oh, I heard that one. Maybe they could tick off a box or something like this, tick off their sentence actually, if they heard it. <clears throat> a pause dictation, what do you think that is? And these are multiple listenings. I tried to keep this onto one page here. So this is not while listening meaning once, right? We're doing multiple listenings. The pause dictation works very well uh, to get students to want to repeat the video. And with repeating it, hearing and seeing that structure so many times helps to get it stuck here. What about pause dictation? Any idea what I mean by this? You can do this with any video. Great stuff in the chat box, but nobody's answering the question. Okay, well, I'll, I'll keep going and maybe uh, we'll get, get something from you. Pause and write. There, thank you very much. <laughs> You're not listening. Oh, good. Dr. Nelly, there's, well, there's actually, yeah, Dr. Nelly, there's a great, I think there's a really good, one of the MOOC presentations was about listening. Someone had some great tips. I think her name was Dr. Jigsaw. You should check that one out. Listen, then pause and let them write. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, with dictation, what's really important is not that you, you know, try to slow it down and make it easier, but that you do enough repetitions and give them enough time to write. This is, it shouldn't be about rushing people to write. Now, this kind of video, because it's pretty short, um, I found with intermediate students, especially, 
they really like repeating it, you know. So you can play it. Oh, it wasn't. It was too fast. Play it again. Well, you, you keep going and going and going. And guess what? When you move into more communicative activities, uh, they've got they've got that conditional uh, right up there. Good. Um, the ghost is moving my my PowerPoint here. Um, so pause dictation. That might be Shawnee Sean. Is Shawnee Sean back? Um, after listening. Uh, and I'll play the video, play the video one more time. Actually, let me play the video one more time and we'll do you. He's back. Excellent. He's here. Woohoo! I'm going to play the video one more time. I'm actually going to ask uh, Sandeep to uh, play the video one more time. Sandeep, could you play the video? That way we can totally eliminate me as uh, screwing up if the media player doesn't work. We're going to watch it one more time. If you could keep in mind some of the things I mentioned in the activity. If you had more money, if you had would you have a money, better life? You do you, you wish you life, were married you and had a husband married, or a wife? A if you went around, around the world, who, who would, would you meet? meet? If, if you, you felt, felt would you, you land on your, your own? own? Would you ever cheat on a final exam? If your friend needed help, would you give her a hand? Or do you wish you were taller, cuter, or thinner? If you met the president, would you ask him to dinner? Would you be the winner if we played a game? If you moved somewhere different, would you still act the same? Could you live in a shack all by yourself? Would you own a gun and keep it on your shelf? If you had poor health, would you write your will? Would you choose to live forever if it came in a pill? One for the trouble, two for the time. Uh, come on, y'all, let's rock the... Blah, 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 blah. Oh, hello. Um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I'm not as quick on the uh, on the mic mute and unmute as I ought to be. Darn! Uh, little free advertising for my former employer, uh, Campus English, <laughs> who was rapping at the very end. Uh, that's from. Um, oh, now I'm gonna forget the name, but it's from it's it's from the movie Wild Style. It's 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 uh, from the Funky Four, I think. No, it's not the Funky Four. It's real old school hip hop, 1979, uh, and it's 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 from um, I can't believe I can't remember now. It's because I'm I'm not really in the old school hip hop mode right now. Uh, the second I get off, but anyway, yeah, that's a sample I put in. That's not me. I said a one for the trouble, two for the time. Uh, come on, y'all, uh, let's rock that. Anyway, um, yeah, we should ask. Uh, we should. <laughs> I think actually, it's Shawnee Sean. Good ask Steven too. Yeah, Shawnee Sean uh, wanted to do a little a little rap today, so maybe we can get him to do it. The new. <laughs> uh, you like me better? Oh, thank you, Susan. How nice of you. Uh, after listening, to direct you back to the PowerPoint. After listening, students compare their lyrics. So it's their dictation, but it's turned into their lyric sheets, right? It's not such a long song, so with an intermediate group, uh, you could do. Uh, you could get them to make their own lyric sheets. I have the lyrics too in a PDF. I will put that into our courseware so you can use uh, the lyrics that I have. This song is actually really long. This is part one. Uh, it has many parts. And in the, the full song, I answer the questions myself. As you can see, uh, after listening in this activity, my idea is they're comparing their lyrics to see how close they were. Discuss the vocabulary as a group. Now, you may want to discuss the vocabulary earlier, writing your will, this kind of thing. It depends on your approach. It depends on the level of the students. I like to get them kind of curious still, and the pictures can help them. 
some of the things like writing your will, students won't know uh, at first, but with the picture and repeated listenings and viewings, they'll be able to make guesses and feel more confident if they know what it means. So I like waiting, uh, not always, but that's what I, I, I did here. Uh, students work alone to answer the questions. Does anyone remember another video? We had the president question. Elena, thank you. Elena with her students in Spain has used uh, many of the Kala tunes and, and reports having success with them. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, bring them to dinner. Would you live in a shack all by yourself? Yeah, shack is a great one. Uh, the first time a student see the word shack. What is shack? I have to look it up in the dictionary. But with a picture of a shack and a few listens, guess what? <laughs> They'll figure it out. Um, so you can wait to do the vocabulary if you want to do it earlier. But students answer their own questions. So would you live in a shack? Uh, what happened to my PowerPoint? Now Nellie's going to say she can see it. No, she can't. I must have. I must have done something. She Nellie would live in a shack if she could join the ELT MOOC. Very nice. So you could do short answers. Yes, I would. No, I wouldn't. Yes, I would. No, I wouldn't. Yes, I would. No, I wouldn't. Or you could get into full answers. Students share their answers. They could make after this. Well, I won't say anything. Extension activities. What could they, do? they share their answers and what could they do? How could you extend the activity? Make it homework or write more lyrics to the song. Chain sentences. Ooh, I like it. What other stuff could you do? Yeah, brand new sentences. Think of new questions. Absolutely. Write their own story. Draw pictures matching the lyrics. Great one. If chain game. Yeah, those chain games with those structures that are hard to learn are so important. Cut papers with sentence on, sentences on them, do some scrambling, have them create a video. Yeah, they could just get up with the, with the cell phone and, they, you know, do their own thing. Could be, could be a rap. It could be just repeating sentences. So, right, focus on this person, this person. You know, if, if, I, if I knew more people here, I'd feel more comfortable or whatever, right? Then film them saying that. Then cut, next person. Act it out while singing. Oh, maybe Susan wants the mic and needs to get on, get on and do some rhyming. No, I won't sit on attack. Would you wear a sack? <laughs> Please come visit me and spend some time in my shack. Um, get Susan on the mic. I'm not messing around with mics right now. Yeah, the chain sentences are great with conditionals. So, uh, does it... <laughs> Does anyone have any questions or comments about this video or this activity? Yeah, Jigsaw. We got the doc. We got the Dr. Jigsaw herself is here with us. But yeah, Jigsaws are great with these grammar structures to make it more fun and to just to get in the habit of of repeating them enough. So you know, we we push our students so early in so many cases to you know say something original with this structure. It's like whoa. It's not that they don't want to. It's just that we need to control the practice more, give them that opportunity to really hear it and see it many times. And you know my soapbox I get on, and I'll just keep saying that over and over. <laughs> but anyway, um, any questions or comments? I keep seeing this about different intonations matching. I want I want to talk about that because uh, if you mean if you mean different accents have different intonations and they're different intonation patterns depending on your first language and how the second language uh, sounds, or do you mean uh, different intonation patterns for me? So I could say you know uh, if I had more money I'd have a better life. I could say if I had more money I'd have a better life. Like that's a difference in intonation. I could also change the intonation on certain words to contrast. You know, if, if I had more money, then I'd have a different life. Not you, right? Did you say if you had more time? No, no. I said if I had more money, I'd have a different Did you say if you had more money, you'd have a better wife? No, no. I said if I had more money, I'd have a better life. Okay, that's intonation for contrast, uh, new information. Ah, Martin's talking about accents. Yeah, Texans speak different when they talk like this. They got their mouth closed like this. If you ever watch one of those shows, I think it's called Family Guy or something here in Texas. 
Yeah. You keep your mouth closed more like this. Yeah. Lots of schwas and lots of short eye sounds. But then you got that little twang. But then if you go down south, down like to the deep south, then you get much more of an open sound on those vowels. Right? That's more like Georgia or something like that. I don't know why, but when I do it, I sound like a woman. I can't sound like a man when I do like the deep sound. Yeah, the southern accent. That's right. Go Georgia. Now that's what I'm talking about. Can I rap that way? Well, you know, I never tried it, but I could. The microphone I take took taking you shake, shift, shaking. Wake, woke, woke into the style I'm creating. Think, thought, thought, and a seek, sought, sought. Listen to the lesson that I teach, talk, talk. What do you think? <laughs> Nabila likes it. <laughs> um, great. Shawnee Sean, who was worried before that he would not be here in time, is probably now saying, guys, I'm here. I got your stuff. Put me back on. Jay, shut up. Get off with these different accents and what the heck are you doing? All right, Shawnee Sean, I'm bringing you back in, baby. Hang on one second. I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you. Ooh, just, 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 that's just a little reminder of why I don't sing, why, why I rap. Um, there he is. Oh, I'm brilliant. Well, thank you, Evelyn. How, how nice of you to say. <laughs> I appreciate that. Shawnee Sean! Hi. <laughs> all right. Nice to see you all again. Nice to see you. You're back from you're back from your quest, from your adventure. Yes, I am. And, Chase, and, uh, did you uh, up upload the second PowerPoint I sent? Absolutely that not. I <laughs> because I was in here presenting. So why don't you say hello to everybody and I'll take care of that right now. Okay, so thanks, Chase, for uh, letting me do this and not uh, <laughs> thinking I was crazy and saying no to it all. Oh, well, you're crazy. Uh, thank you to Sarah. You're crazy, yeah. but that's why okay. I said yes. No, you're crazy, man. Okay. You're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> but so am I, and that's why I said yes. I wouldn't want you to be any different. <laughs> Uh, thanks to Sylvia and to Vicky for sending me some online activities. They are actually online now. Um, I didn't look at them, so I've got no idea what's in them, but uh, I'm sure they're great. Um, to Jack, um, I wanted an actual later. Okay, so what I'll do, um, I wanted to show you what I've done with the PowerPoint, but it's um, I can't do that now. So I'm going to paste in the URL to the lesson. Um, I didn't get the 60 activities that I wanted to do, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so I'm going to type in the URL um, and the actual article that I've used. I did it very quickly, so there's some spelling mistakes, I'm sure. I've just seen one. Um, so there's the URL, and that's the actual... Oh, there's a limit to how much I can put in chat. So I managed to do five listenings at different speeds, um, slowest, slower, medium, faster, and fastest. Um, there's a five-speed reading activity, so students can scroll through the article at 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 words per minute. Um, and there's a 10-sentence dictation. Wrong link, really? Uh, that's worked for me. Hold on. Yeah, that opens that that link. Oops, I've just lost the feed. That link opens for me, the one that I post that I pasted last. Um, so I managed to do about half of what I wanted to do. Uh, thanks everybody, all the teachers for your ideas for um, giving me for helping me finish the paragraph. And I told you earlier that I would finish the rest of it in one hour, but I forgot that I've got to finish my breaking news English lesson first. So. Uh, I will finish the rest of the teaching using technology lesson that you helped me with in, well, today sometime. I promise that. And that's it from me. 
over to you, Jace, back in the studio. <laughs> Upload it. <laughs> so if you want to okay. just uh, wait one second, uh, we, we, can, we can get it in here. Um, but actually, what I can do while Hi, doing my that name's Nikki Hawking. is one second. Sylvia, are you here? Can I bring you in to present something? Yes, she is here. Okay, good. So, yeah, yeah, and I've recently written a book about the webinar. Now, Sean, I'm going to bring you back in. I'm going to bring you back in. I did. Yeah, I didn't get the PowerPoint in. I should have delegated that to somebody because I was uh, actually presenting. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, so good afternoon. Go this is live online news by Brain Friendly in. English Online. Sylvia yeah, yeah. should be here shortly. Hello. Oh, there she is. Hi, Sylvia. Hi. <laughs> I've enjoyed the class so much. Um, well, I, I was very amused by Sean's idea that we go off and make quick news lessons. Very so, cool. Very cool. Um, so, uh, Jason, do you want me to present um, our appreciation for the facilitators and participants I, I absolutely do if you could do that and um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna go off I'm gonna go off and um, do the PowerPoint and Sean's still here because I'm, I'm still uh, struggling to get rid of him even though we love you Sean so maybe I'll leave you up there but uh, I've got I'm probably gonna take you off too but Sylvia yeah if you could um, if you could do that that would be fantastic yeah, um, I, I I suppose it's here for me to find, right? It should be. It should um, be if, okay, you, if, if, you, if you put it in there. I don't know if I can find the PDF. That's I can't move. Can you, can you put on the PDF before you go? Yeah. Well, what I'm going to do is, uh, one second. I'm not sure I see. I know you loaded the PDF in here, but I don't. Library. Well, I ah, that's why. Okay, so let me go get that. One right. moment, and I just gave you controls. Yeah, sorry. I'm having an internet connection issue, guys. This is not a uh, WizIQ. Unfortunately, it's happening on my side here. Yeah. Anyway, um. Today was about wrapping up the MOOC, and we can't wrap up the MOOC without uh, expressing our appreciation for the most important people in this MOOC. So, thank you, Jason. Yes, this is for participants, and there's one more for facilitators. Okay, that's great. So, so, okay, this is a very short, simple message for everybody here, and everybody who has taken time out from their lives to come and listen to us and to share our ideas. And it's something amazing that people from all over the world just collect together in this little space for some sharing of ideas and some inspiration. And we appreciate that a lot. So this is my little message, which speaks for Jason too, I think, and for all the centers. The ripple effect um, who adopt and create what we share to inspire their schools and students around the world. So the participants are everybody who has joined this MOOC. And you, you are the ripple effect because anything we share with you, you're going to share with your students or your colleagues. And your students and your colleagues are going to create new things from all of the ideas from 24 presenters here, and not only the ideas from 24 presenters, ideas from facilitators and your colleagues and peers who spoke to you on the forum to share the ideas in the chat box. So if you look at this image, this is what I want to share, that we're not just people here in this little classroom. This is going everywhere. It's we touch each other's hearts and minds and it's going everywhere. So every, the people who joined this course have made it happen. And that's the ripple effect, okay? And that's very important for us. 
and that's the only reason why a master's course could ever succeed. Okay. So, yeah. Now I. Yes. Uh, I. It's wonderful what you're saying. I don't want to cut you off, except that when I look in the content, I only see this one. I don't see another one. Oh, uh, the other one was. Um, a mind map for the, for all the work the facilitators have done. Uh, it's not wait, there. Yeah, I have access. To the wait, I'm going to. Wait, maybe I can upload. I'm going to try and upload. Okay. Give give it a shot. I'm also I'm also having a I'm also having a problem with the PowerPoint from Sean. I'm having a bad day over here with that. So we what we I'm may. Have... To okay. okay. So uh, so we have 47 people here. I wonder how many people here um, have been here for many, many lessons or who just come in to a couple of lessons. I'm, I'm sure there are some people who come to a lot of them and everybody who comes makes a difference just by being here. And also, while I'm waiting to upload the other document, um, maybe we can use this time for everybody to think about one person who has helped them or in us, but not a presenter. Maybe you can think of a colleague or a facilitator or someone working with you uh, in the chat box on the course feed and with IQ or on Facebook or anybody. If you think of one person who has influenced you, maybe you can all, if each person could write one little message in the chat box. Okay, Vicky, what, what did Melissa do to inspire you? Okay, if each who and what inspired them, I think that would be our way to show appreciation for everybody here and for what a massive open online course really means. For All of us comment something that could inspire you. Yeah, Martin. Um, yes, I find that they get a bit lost in the course feed. That's why I'm going to move everything to another place where they're easy to find, and I'm going to be there every day to make sure everybody can find anything they need. Okay. Um, now I'm I'm trying to find the file. So I, I'm not going to speak for a minute. Just put in your comments. Yeah. yeah, that's what I want to see. I want to see the comments about who's inspired you. And not just presenters. I want this appreciation for the facilitators and participants. That's what this part is about. Of course, write whatever you feel like as well. And, you know, we're going to copy this uh, chat box so we can read after about who inspired everybody and that's also very important okay so i'm going to stop talking and i'll never find the file Okay, anyway, the thing I'm trying to upload is basically my list of what facilitators have done. So, uh, can any of you write what you think the facilitators have done for this course? Uh, this course is supposed to reach out to thousands of people, right? So, who keeps everything going? Who keeps the social networks alive or the course feeds alive or the comments alive? Okay, I love all the comments coming in about inspiration. Um, yeah, um, I love uh, 
the names coming up for the facilitators. Oh, the question was, uh, can you think of a facilitator or a colleague who has inspired you during the MOOC? This is our time to um, express our appreciation for all of those people. Um, also, I've, got, I've, I've got the PDF now. I've got it now. Okay, so Sylvia, I'm going to take away your video because the audio is really bad, your connection. So I'm going oh, to take mine. away your video. Yeah, just, just the video. I'll give you the mic. Okay, so now you have audio but no video because people couldn't hear you clearly. Yeah, and you can speak anyway. I just want to get the picture up there. Okay. Then I'll then I'll come back. I'll I'll talk about the picture yeah. then when it comes in. It did a lot of work. I agree with that. I I agree with all of it because of course this is the first time I've looked down because I'm searching. Okay. Uh, I made a mind map. Of, yeah. I made a mind map of uh, some different things that facilitators have been doing. So I, I'll just read it quickly. Here's a here's a well. Okay. Here's a map of what facilitators have been doing for the MOOC. I have left empty branches because there's so much help and sharing going on that it's impossible to document everything in space. I also thought it would be nice for everyone if one thing someone did for them in this MOOC. And by adding this to the chat box, you can extend the map live online. So that's what we've been doing. The facilitators have been responding to questions, messages, tags, and discussions, sharing links, opinions, knowledge, and spirit, creating materials, lesson plans, and poster designs. Some facilitators have been doing this, and we saw we had a showcase for some of those. Um, been interacting in forums, Facebook chat box. Feed, whenever we needed feedback for new things, we asked our facilitators to test them out first. So. They tried things and they gave us their ideas. And they encouraged all of us, participants and presenters, and they gave us all their energy and their vibes. Um, that's, what, that's the basic uh, outline of what they have done for us. But they have done much more. And that's why I put it on the mind map, because the influence reaches out everywhere. So that's it. We want to show you that we appreciate everybody here. It's a huge, huge uh, network of international leaders together. That's all, Chase, from me. Okay, and Sylvia, um, I, I talked about um, when Sylvia had her class yesterday, if you were here, uh, just how incredibly important she is to me um, and how this wouldn't be happening this way if it weren't for her and Dr. Nellie Deutsch. The two of them um, have influenced me so much and helped me so much uh, to get to the point where I felt I could make this kind of thing happen. But as she's pointed out, were it not for the facilitators and presenters, the whole idea of a connectivist MOOC, which is what we are, we're a C MOOC. Remember C. Always remember C. <laughs> but C MOOC, connectivist MOOC, it's not like the MOOCs you hear about in the news that are, nobody likes them, they're boring, nobody's finishing, it's too much work, it's too, you know, MOOCs don't work. Well, that kind of MOOC is not working very well because it's not, uh, yeah, we're old school C MOOC. Th those kind of MOOCs um, are too much like trying to replicate what happens in a, in a lecture hall, uh, but online, which, mm -hmm. so what we're doing is very different. Uh, a la George Siemens and Stephen Downs, uh, and Nelly was right there with those people and influenced me so much in my thinking about this MOOC. And uh, what Sylvia is talking about, this magic that's happening, is only because we're, we're, we're opening up and letting it happen. And that's the idea. So if it seems sometimes disorganized, if it seems sometimes, uh, wait, what is going on? Um, I'm sorry about that, but I feel the benefits outweigh uh, the negatives. As far as you know, if we, leaving things a little bit open, more open, mean that 
<clears throat> meetings between people can happen, networks can develop, questions can be asked and answered in a communicative form that you just don't see happening in, in these other MOOCs. So uh, really glad that we've done this. And remember, it's not a one-time thing. We're going to do three a year. It's just going to get better and, and, and bigger and easier to, to learn from each other. So very exciting stuff. Shawnee Sean, are you still here? Shawnee Sean, we're with the phone. Got it going on. How ironic that Sean and I were worried earlier that he wouldn't have enough time <laughs> to go away and come back. I should have known, since we're always extending these classes, uh, and I just, uh, oops, it looks like I'm giving the controls to someone else. Shawnee Sean, there you are, my friend. Uh, we have your PowerPoint here. I am so sorry uh, it took this long uh, to get it up here, but uh, take it away, my friend. Okay. Mm, uh, one moment. Yes, okay, so the news splash is that uh, <laughs> lots of teachers collaborated and we, we got a lesson together. Um, teachers make big, big lesson together. Um, I'm not sure how many activities I managed to do. We'll go through them quickly now. Um, the green and purplish colored box, that's how many activities I was hoping to have online. They, they are online activities. The blue words are linked to them. And the white box at the bottom with the contents, that will be what um, is going to be in the PDF. I haven't st didn't have time to start that. But I did all of the listening on the left. I did all of the dictations. I did all of the speed readings. And I managed to put up eight of the activities in spelling, words, and grammar. So they were ready to use right now. Um, that's the speed listening. Slower, slower, slowest, faster, fastest. These are um, okay. I didn't do. I'm going through the, these. Maybe on the site. This is what I wanted to do and show you some pictures. Um, there's consonant exercises. That's there. That's the vowel activities there. Lots of different activities. The dictations there. Um, I'm basically going to go straight to the end because <laughs> there's lots of things to look at. So I'll be uh, another 30 seconds before I get to the end. I think it's taking too long to um, scroll through the slides. Um, all I wanted to say is uh, thank you to everybody for helping me with this. And if you do um, take it into class, uh, it would be great if you could let me know um, how you did with it, what you did with it, or any ideas or feedback. You can um, email me on the link I provided um, in chat earlier. And um, that's it from me on my room on top of the mountain. Okay. Oh, Jace, you can come back oh, now. There's actually a <laughs> is that, you, is it amazing. There's actually a function. If you look at that little square, you can go to the last, open it up and go to the last slide. I'm uh, sorry, yeah. I didn't tell you about that. I thought I'd done it, but when I tried it, again, I'm having internet connect. Oh, there we go. I'm, I'm just having connection <laughs> problems, so okay. I'm, 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 uh, no, so I'm no use to anybody today over here. So that's the link to uh, the lesson. Uh, we did it. The link to the lesson. Um, that's a summary of my site. Everything is free. Uh, they are my other websites that I have. If we and put together it. a world record book of uh, English language teachers, uh, Shawnee Sean Bonville is going to be uh, <laughs> in many categories setting records. 
And here he is again. First, first individual, first ELT. To, <laughs> what are we calling this approach? I mean, this is incredible. A couple of years from now, man, it's going to be like we take for granted in online uh, language. Don't say it, man. You got to go back and trademark it and, you know, back in. It's, it's really, it's okay. really, really cool. Yeah. It, it, and it really, um, you know, it underscores this point that I think is, is not uh, emphasized enough about online teaching and learning, which is the collaboration. Uh, and collaborations with, uh, you know, with no limit as far as the diversity, the people, well, the limits of the internet and the limits of, of things like this. But, you know, compared to 12 people in a classroom, 32 people in a classroom. So this, this is uh, why online learning is, is going to bloom and blossom uh, because once you get a taste of working with people from everywhere, there's no going back. <laughs> You're not going to go back. It'll be as contrived to be in a closed classroom as it will be even sooner than that to be in a uh, one textbook that you can't get out of. Uh, so Sean just uh, took us uh, a step into the future today. Uh, and we, I hope we helped you out. I know, I know it was very experimental, but um, we can try it again. Thank you, Sean Bonville. Now, stay on the screen. We're going to just... Can I say one last thing? Oh, you want to wrap? Go yeah. ahead, man. Do your thing. <laughs> okay. No, something, just, um, else, something else. Yeah. Today, today's class was fun for me. It was quite stressful trying to act, trying to finish everything. But uh, it's pretty cool that we can collaborate and, and get something online quickly. And yeah. uh, I'd love to try it again in the future. Of course. So thank you, Jason. Thank you, everybody. Oh, yeah. You're, you're so welcome. And like, you know, the, the stress, we just have to remember, we are, we are, we are uh, constructing all of this stuff ourselves. You know, this is all a big laboratory going on. So, uh, and the participants and facilitators, they're, they're, they're on the same, you know, they're on the same wavelength with us. So that, that's what's really exciting about this type of, of course. So if you could stay there, I'm just going to try to bring in, I want to bring in, uh, bring Jack back in. Uh, I want to bring uh, Vicky back in if she's here. Just to wave and say goodbye, and if anyone has any question for any of us, let me get let me get Dr. Nelly here too. Dr. Nelly, I'm here. There she is. Wasn't that fast? <laughs> Wasn't that fast? That was fast. Your internet connection is definitely behaving itself. Yeah, for now. Cross your fingers. For now. <laughs> so there's Dr. Nelly. Yep, I didn't bring uh, my hat though. Gosh. Where's my hat? My Santa no Claus. Hat. Santa Claus. Dr. Nelly, how many people can we have in here? Uh, about six. Six. So I'm going to save Sylvia for last since we just saw no, her. No, but let's, I think you could uh, be the seventh. Uh, well, we'll try it. Hi. Here comes Vicki Hollett. And here comes Jack. Oh, he did it. He got his. <laughs> Great. OK. Oh, so let me, let me go get Sylvia. You got the hat. I left mine on Facebook. My Santa hat. Uh, yeah, not more than not more than uh, six users. But wait a second. Get rid of support. Ask support to leave. I'm not trying to get more. We don't, we don't have more. Uh, Is he still here? Tell him to, to leave. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> so I can bring Sylvia in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she is. All right. Well, we got everybody in here to say goodbye. That's great. And... Um, yeah, we need a screenshot. Somebody, screenshot. Screenshot, screenshot. Let's get the, uh, let's get the uh, mind map back up here so we can take a picture. Oh, there's a hat. I want my hat. <laughs> yeah, 
Yes, let's put the participants up there. There we go. Because it's all about the P's. I don't know if you know, we call you the P's when we're with the F's. <laughs> the facilitators and the participants. The best part is we are all participants uh, and we're all uh, benefiting from getting together this way. So you can thank us, but we'll thank you and then you'll thank us and we'll thank you and we'll just keep on going that way. Whatever your holiday uh, that you celebrate, Happy holidays. If you don't have holidays this time of year, then have happy one. Happy days. Have a holiday. <laughs> yeah, have one anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure as teachers, teachers tend to need them more often than others. But don't always get them <laughs> as often as others. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks Thank for coming you, to this Jace. extra long class. We will see you in WizIQ. We will see you in Club EFL. We will see you in the next MOOC in March. Thank you so much to everyone that came today. Thank you to the people who presented today. Bye. Have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening. Peace and much respect, ELT Techniques teachers. <laughs> Bye. Bye.